Hello, and welcome to Living a Culture of Life podcast by Human Life International. I am your host, Colleen Haupt, and I'm joined today by Father Bouquet, our president. Hello, Colleen, Father. Colleen, good to be with you again. Yeah, it's good to be back. Um, and today we're going to be talking about a recent court case where a woman named Serena Fletes sued Pornhub over pornographic videos that were uploaded to the website of her when she was a minor. So just jump right into that. Sure. I mean, uh, I mean, the, the whole reason why I address this case is because of the, of the whole industry that revolves around pornography, and not only in the United States, but coming around the world, and, and the, the, the tragedy of what this industry does uh, to human persons. And that's why, you know, part of my uh, title of, of, of the article and what I get into the article is about, you know, pornography dehumanizes in the sense that, you know, it's important for people to realize that, uh, that these are, uh, you know, human persons with innate dignity, uh, owed respect. And we're gonna talk more about that, I know, as we get through the article a little bit, but it's when you look at the issue with, with uh, Fletes, you know, you realize that she's 13 years old at the time. Her boyfriend had recorded, uh, you know, videos of her. Uh, she didn't know that those videos were going to be used uh, by him in such a manner that they would be uploaded uh, to uh, to Pornhub, uh, which is owned by Mind, uh, MindGeek. And, you know, that... Uh, and all of a sudden, you know, it, her images are all over the internet, being uploaded, downloaded, and you know, uh, spread over through the social media, you know. And so, and, and, and so, all of a sudden, her life is radically changed. Not only was it radically radically changed in the event that with her and her boyfriend, you know, in the recording, you know, obviously, you know, but how that event, you know, which was, you know, in her mind, was something just between the two of them, now has been turned into a further exploitation. So she's exploited on multiple le levels here. And, and so uh, and the way the story unfolds is now her, her life as moving into her later teens, into her young adulthood, uh, this e exploitation, this uh, violence against her dignity, uh, you know, has followed her. And it's caused her, you know, a tremendous amount of difficulty. Uh, and and that those words don't even capture the heart of what she is suffering, and many others like like her, and uh, in, in in this industry today. And the court case deals with a lawsuit that she's filed, and not only her, but other women who have joined in the lawsuit against MindGeek, the owners of Porn Pornhub. You know, not only for the video that has been up, uploaded in, when she was 13. But others have suffered the same consequence or the same result uh, of being uh, used, exploited, and, and their videos out there all over the world. So uh, I think it's a good opportunity, Colleen, for us to talk about, you know, what makes this industry so vile? What is it, you know, that uh, that's uh, caused me concern that, that I would write about it? So it's not a news story in a sense of for the news, but it's because it deals with human persons and that this industry, which uh, exploits the dignity of the human person uh, and, and lowers the, the human person to nothing more than a body, to be used, to be commodified. And that's really what stirred me uh, to address it. Yeah, and it's a issue that is so pertinent in today's world, just as more and more movies and the culture accepts porn as something that should be, they consider acceptable. It's good to be aware of what's going on and be able to talk about it in a way right. that we'll be able to discuss what's the issue with it. Right. Um, so let's just start by, can you just explain a little bit for our listeners who Serena Flaites was and what the background to this court case is a little bit? Yeah, so as, as I was just you know expressing, you know, so she was 13 at the time when uh, her boyfriend recorded her, uh, whether uh, uh, in, in, uh, this kind of sexual expressions and, you know, I don't want to get into too much detail yeah. audibly, but, <laughs> okay, but basically so. the, you know, he recorded uh, their sexual activities. Yeah. And then this is now uploaded, you know, to, to the website for Pornhub, uh, which at the time, and as we, as the article and some of the court case reveals, uh, up until recently, their procedures did not safeguard for this. Matter of fact, they knew uh, that she was a minor. Obviously, it's titled 13-year-old, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and then others been titled very similarly. Uh, so in a sense, you know, this is an awareness by the owners of Pornhub and, you know, advocating, you know, the exploitation of minors. So this is a case now where there's a legal component. We're dealing with minors. But as we go forward in time, we will see that, you know, that sadly, you know, uh, Fletes is continues, you know, down a very dangerous path and gets herself caught in some addictive behaviors. All of this goes back 
you know, to this this moment of time uh, in this very tragic situation, the tragic decision to allow her boyfriend to to do this, uh, and then how that became used by her boyfriend and many others since, you know, to exploit her, and and so so this whole industry is you know really also very culpable because one a minor, two you know the idea even when she asked it to be removed. You know, as the uh, article speaks about, she uh, reached out to Pornhub, kind of pretending that she was the mother. You know, I want this removed. And, and of course, it took, as the, as the uh, court case reveals, it took weeks, one, for it to come off. But it, but so many people had already downloaded it. So well, many people already had access to once it. Once they d- took it down, it got uploaded again by other users, exactly, right? Yeah, right. that was And part that's the of whole the... understanding. Of I mean, I'm not a big, you know, social media in the sense of phones and, you know, uh, you know Facebook and so many other uh, platforms. But from what I understand, you know, it's obviously, you know, you know, so if I download something and I share it with you and then you share it with someone else, I mean, this just kind of just, you know, just perpetuates itself through time and then other people can download it share it and just so how do you take all that back it's out there and so these images are forever out there you know uh, and so this is what this court case is dealing with and as uh, those who come back to the article you know you can read some of the quotes from the judge in this case you know who really you know holds nothing back in addressing you know how uh, uh, complicitous you know Pornhub mind geek the owner uh, is in this situation and has been for so long, and the whole industry uh, is, is there, and uh, and I think that's something you know that uh, this, this case is bringing to the surface. I think it's, a, and obviously we got Visa involved, yeah. as as I talk about in in, in my article, because uh, porn uh, Pornhub or uh, MindGeek, you know, is using the Visa, Mastercard, and for people to pay, you know, for the services, and and so uh, and to be able to to download this material and whatever else is involved in, in payment. And it sounds like it was also running ads on the site that were all being processed. They were making, from what I was understood of the article, about right. 50% of their profit came from, right. from ads, ads that were then processed by Visa. Exactly. So that so there's other people involved, you can see. Uh, and though uh, we saw that uh, as the story unfolds, we'll see Visa and Mastercard make different decisions as they go forward in time and, you know, pull their support or pull their ads. But, but the, the damage just shows how this industry really influences so many other aspects of business industry out there and how many people are actually involved and and also which you know I don't get into the article too too much because I didn't want to get too many too many topics but we can deal not that this is the case this is not the case but in a sense of of human trafficking you know how many young men young women today are kidnapped we just had a case that came out in the evening news a few days ago that I have not read fully yet but um, it talks about I forget uh, over a hundred uh, people uh, in uh, adults and then I forget the number was somewhere in, in the hundreds as well of young people who who uh, in this uh, sting identifying those who had been trafficked now I don't know if it was with sex trafficking or whether it was labor trafficking but nonetheless we're talking about human beings that have been kidnapped taken away from their families and are being used you know for whatever means and so I, I think this this whole topic helps us to address you know all the underpinning issues and and also to talk about this in the public forum you know as I mentioned uh, in, in the beginning you know people have become so desensitized to this and you know and many people would say well you know well, she she quote unquote allowed this well first of all she's a minor she's 13 years old at the time you know even as we go forward in time you know the the idea yeah she was an adult she chose to do some more things but these are people exploiting her using her throughout this journey you know getting her into other avenues of of, of addictions and 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 exploiting her to make money for themselves and and so it, this we have to talk about this is what this industry does and it, and, it, and and I use that word commodifies because it takes a, a person who is made in the image and likeness of God who is precious and you know irreplaceable irrepeatable and, and and treats them you know like my water cup sitting over here you know that once I'm finished with the water I can just dispose of it if it were a plastic cup you know and, and but that's not the human person that's not how the human person should be treated or seen. And so we also, Colleen, can talk about you know how it commodifies the beautiful gift of human sexuality, the expression of sexual love that really is meant to be expressed only and fully and completely in the context of marriage. But this industry, again, just takes the human person, in a sense, kind of dissects them into two entities, you know, uh, a body and a, and, a, and a mind, you know, and so, 
but we are body persons. We have a soul, you know, and, and we approach the human person as an integrated whole, not separate parts. And, and we, don't, we don't dissect the human person. We don't rupture, you know, in a sense, the person. But this is what's going on in, in this industry, uh, among many other sexual exploitive industries out there. Uh, and this makes billions of dollars. I mean, this is, this is a money racket. And, and at the heart of it is the exploitation of people. Well, going back to the money racket, um, let's talk about a little bit about the New York Times article mm -hmm. that was linked to Visa because that kind of showed how much power Visa actually had over MindGeek and Pornhub. And it was a seemed like a very significant part of the case that the judge referenced a couple of times, be saying basically using it as an example of the power that Visa had over Pornhub. Right. Yeah. I mean, because, I mean, again, if we if we realize, I mean, Visa could have easily said, you know, I'm not participating in this. Which I'm PayPal not, did. That's right. PayPal was like, I'm not touching this. Backed out of it. Yeah. And, you know, and I think that shows you the leverage that the other industries have if they really want to step forward. Because the only way that, you know, MindGeek and uh, the owner of Pornhub and other, you know, porn industry uh, executives and businesses can acquire their funding, you know, today we know it's through these kinds of platforms. So if Visa, MasterCard and others would retract you know, or not even begin with, that'd be the ideal, uh, to support it, then we, you know, how do you, how would Pornhub receive its funds? How would it get paid? How would it, you know, get its ads out there or, you know, to make the money that they're making off of this type of industry? And for the context of that, there was a New York Times article on child abuse that was published in December of 2020, which tied Visa to it, I believe. And after that was released, Visa backed, stopped processing payments, which caused MindGeek to take down, I think it was 80% of their videos. So that was why it was a significant, it right. has been... I think they have come back to processing payments at this point, but it, the judge used it as an example of showing how much power Visa actually has over Mind Mind Geek. Right. Um, exactly. No, so. and, and it's good that you, you you give a little more of that detail because it just kind of it shows you know the complexity of the case. So it's not only you know one side of the uh, of the of the issue of how to collect the funds. You know, of course, like you said, you know they may have returned back to to allowing their platform to be used. But it's more in the idea is when it when it pulled back, it sent a shockwave, mm -hmm. you know, through through you know MindGeek saying, okay, wait a minute here, and it made them change direction. So that goes back to sensitivity. I mean, you know, I can't read the executives' minds, you know, in these various industries, but you know, one would hope that someone along that executive chain, you know, one, they probably saw a legal matter. They saw, uh, you know, obviously this is we're going to drug in the court here. Uh, but I would want to hope, I would want to believe that some within that same executive leadership also said, wait a minute, this is not right. You know, th this is, th we're talking about minors here. We're talking about, you know, exploitation of, 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 of young people in a situation that we're talking about. And, and, it, and it grows that somehow this is someone's daughter, someone's son. This is a someone, not a thing. I'm hoping that that sensitivity was also there that they were they were they were appalled by what what was being done but again i'm that's that's wishful thinking but uh, I, i'm hoping it was not just from a legal point mm -hmm. um, I, I, even though i know that's probably the reality but i think it's important that we 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 see that the i mean if others would enter this in this conversation on those levels of of influence we could minimize the pornography industry. We could strip it, you know, of, uh, uh, of 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 its influence and its opportunity. And and I think that's what the judge was pointing out. I mean, so Mindy could have done something about this. It wasn't until they were threatened, and they and their and their pocketbook was threatened, and the financial gains were threatened, and they saw that there was other people that were going to uh, stop supporting that in uh, them. That oh, all of a sudden, well, we need to pull. We need to pull. But. In the positive side, as the judge points out, and, and you make note of, is that it shows it could be done. It could have been done. And they, and so that makes them even more guilty because they, they, they waited until they were threatened, you know, uh, with financial loss, you know, before they made a decision. Yeah. And it also shows the approach that she's using is she's not just saying, oh, these videos are up there and they shouldn't be. She's saying, no, there's actually a like financial reason that these were not taken down. And she seems to be attacking the what's driving that, which is that desire for more money to be made off of these videos. Right. Not simply like obviously the fact that they exist online is terrible, but she was right. the court case seems to be targeting a lot of that financial industry driving it. Right. And the people that are willing to turn a blind eye or to not turn a blind eye and be 
blatantly okay with this going and, on. And I think, Colleen, we can also, you know, even though it's not in there, we can also see then it just feeds this industry. Yeah. So in other words, it makes the exploitation of younger people even more available. As you know, any one of us have been following, you know, this conversation. I've written on pornography many times, and the understanding is, you, as we see, of as where people are looking for what they're searching for. And you will see very sadly that it's looking for younger. As a matter of fact, they're looking for, for people who may be of adult age, but look younger. So they're feeding this 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 industry. And, and we can see where, again, trafficking can come in, where you know people could be easily, not saying, again, I'm just, I'm stretching the story here. And it's not in this story, yeah. but I, I see in other ways that we exploit human beings you know, so by creating an industry within the industry. So if we create a market, that's what we're talking about here. And so we're marketing a certain age, we're marketing a certain look, we're marketing a certain segment of, of humanity to attract, you know, very perverted minded, very much people seeking, you know, this perversion. And uh, again, all at the exploitation of another person, you know, so the gratification, the pleasure seekers, all based upon how I can be gratified based on someone else. And, and so this is, this is something that, you know, uh, that's why it, it's, hard, it, it, it's hard to get rid of because there's so many things feeding it. So, but as we've been talking about, is that if you can get the, the industries that are, are large enough that can actually have a tremendous impact, you know, if I may use an example of HLI, so, and others in the pro-life and family cause, that some of the platforms, social platforms, are removing mm -hmm. us from conversation. Now imagine if those same platforms would turn it around uh, to these issues like pornography, which are vulgar, they're offensive, they are obscene, uh, they are per uh, perverted, promoting various behaviors. If they would turn around and use their industry to, to remove that, you know, think of the influence that would have upon our culture. You know, at one time, we believed in, in that pornography was something very vile, and, very, and very, as a country that we did not want advanced, you know, and we put lots of mechanisms, laws into effect, you know, obscenity laws, you know, to, in a sense, protect that uh, the society from this moral intrusion. And so, but we've removed, you know, uh, the majority of states have removed all that mechanism. And now the internet, of course, allows it, uh, the click of a button, the push of a button, or even, you know, speaking, you know, to the, to the thing, it pops up, here it is. And so, uh, you know, uh, with, uh, when I was, uh, you know, in a sense of just dating back a little bit, you know, obviously when this whole internet started, you know, the, the pop-up ads and all the various things, and they, you had to buy, you know, uh, software to stop them from coming in there. And, but that's all gone now because it, it's, so, it's so easy and readily available. And this is what makes me also concerned, Colleen, I'm sorry to talk a little longer on it, but this makes me concerned with our young people today because so many parents, in it, in it not, you know, not thinking through the, this, you know, give their children these phones and access to the internet so, so early, not thinking, you know, of, of just a click of a button can open to something and open to something else. And, you know, uh, I've had some friends recently show me on Facebook, and again, which I don't use. I mean, HLI uses it, so I mean, I have to I use it as well on that level, but I really don't, you know, work in that, in that social media platform. I, I don't. But someone showed me that, you know, if you uploaded a picture and then that, that's tagged in a certain way, but that if you click on it, it leads you to something else and another person's, and there could be other images all the way through. There's something can start innocent, mm -hmm. you know, and all of a sudden, it, but it, you, you, it leads you to somewhere else. So, I mean, I'm not saying, I don't know if kids are playing on, I mean, I'm assuming they're playing on all these kind of platforms, but it's concerning because it just, you can't take that innocence back. Once they are exposed to it, and you know, just like with Flintes, you know, when this happened, life changed, mm -hmm. radically changed. I mean, she experienced the bullying in school, the, the mockery in the school system, you know, to the point where she was alienated, isolated. I mean, this did, th th there's nothing innocent here. You know, it, it, it marred her. And yes, we can say the, f the first occasion was is just making herself available to that. But she did not ask to be exploited. She did not ask to be used. She did not ask for this to happen. So, but the, the, the reality is her life now has been radically changed. And, and so, and how many young people, how many adults today, you know, are, are dealing with those scars, those wounds, and those realities? 
So it is a very concerning, and I'm hoping that you know that uh, myself and others who are, are talking about this case, that parents are, are pausing, you know, adults raising children are pausing. And uh, and we also know how pornography industry affects marriage, marriage life, yeah. affects so many adults today. So this is an industry that is... Uh, sadly, tragically affecting and infecting our culture. And you also have social medias that have the algorithms that like, if like they can start popping that up, if they sense that like, if they think that someone it would be interested in that type of, I don't know, I've heard anecdotal stories of people saying like, oh, as soon as a guy starts an Instagram account, Instagram just starts kicking up. And I don't know if that's true or not that, but that's just one story I heard someone use as an example. And also you see that with the movies these days coming out with just like pushing the envelope just slightly more and trying to desensitize the culture that may not ever go looking for porn, like porn right. videos on Pornhub, right. trying to desensitize them to exactly. introduce it. So that's why when we talk about pornography, I mean, of course there's different, and you just gave, you explained it. I mean, you have what people call soft porn, mm -hmm. you know, into hard porn, and then you got other dynamics of it, but you're absolutely correct. I mean, you know, I'm old enough, you know, to, to realize, you know, how the industry has affected, you know, from, from the way that certain movies, I mean, how they introduce certain subjects, how they, they push the envelope a little bit, you know, today you know you know so many people are you know complain about the movies because it's, it's the violence the sexual imagery i mean all of this is but it is it, it has desensitized mm -hmm. and if we're honest we have been desensitized you know and and for those of us that are much more sensitive we're seen as the outcast you know the the so-called rigid or you know uh too religious you know that type of thing whatever the language they want to say but it's it, it but we've lost the sensitivity you know, to realize that these things are not healthy. And, you know, oftentimes people will say, well, these are consenting adults. Well, does it still doesn't make it right. Why? Because we're dealing with human persons, you know, with an, with an inalienable dignity, you know, and this incomparable value. And, you know, and, and this flows from being made in the image and likeness of our Creator and, and made you know, to, to live our lives in, in seeking truth and, and goodness and, and beauty. And, and this is a falsification, you know, a misuse of a good. The human person is an, an end in themselves, a good in themselves. That's what intrinsic means. And, and so the idea is that, you know, to falsify, you know, to, to use the body, you know, for which it has not been made, you know, to falsify the good of, of sexual love, that is meant to be between husband and wife, you know, in an exclusive, indissoluble, fruitful union. And to falsify, you know, um, the, the, these things is never a good. And, and it causes great harm to individuals, to persons, and it causes great harm to, you know, to our society. And we're seeing the consequence of that. We're seeing, you know, so many things as a result when we have unmoored ourselves you know, from these objective truths. And when we have desensitized our, our, our understanding and our approaches, you know, to these goods, and, and here we are, and it's people just like Fletes and others like her, and, and we have to put young men in here, we have to put men in this situation, you know, because now that, that it's an industry in and of itself there as well. And, and so these are, and I always, you know, try to remind people when I counsel people who may be struggling, you know, with maybe an, uh, uh, an attraction toward pornography, even to a point maybe some type of addictive behaviors, is to really plant within them that this is another human being. Mm -hmm. This is, as I said earlier, this is someone. You know, whether or not they chose freely to be there or whether or not, you know, whether through coercion or, or, or just free will, but this is a human being. This is a person, you know, that someone's, someone's, you know, belongs to someone's family, a family. You know, this is a daughter, a son, uh, uh, you know, a sister, a brother, a cousin. So we have to put this in the mind that this is not never to be used. We are never to, to treat a human person in this manner. And we've lost that, sadly, as a whole within mm -hmm. our culture. And when people look at how much money is being generated daily in this industry, it's mind-boggling. Truly mind-boggling, and uh, and that's why uh, very similar in a way to the whole abortion industry, it's it's tentacled into so many things that people think that we'll never get them, you know, unstrapped, but we can if we take a different turn. I'm hoping that this case, you know, will do some 
some damage, you know. Yeah. And you mentioned in the, your article that it could potentially prepare a legal framework to protect the victims. How would exactly do you, do you have any idea of how that would play out or is it just drawing attention? It's just to drawing attention to it. I okay. mean, I, I don't know how the I mean, each state, you know, obviously has its own legal you know ways of approaching these kinds mm-hmm. of subjects. Uh, but if anything else, I mean, the, the we want the whole industry to go away. All yeah. right. <laughs> Obviously, uh, but at the same time, we know that that may not be, a, you know, an a, a obtainable reality today. But can we whittle at it? So, mm-hmm. for example, MindGeek, Pornhub, and others should be held accountable for how uh, children have been used, and they should be penalized for this legally. There should be jail time, you know, for people that have done this. You know, this is something that needs to be dealt with. So that's so if we can move the industry where it has to you know, prove that this person is an adult of free will, given their free decision without coercion. Like, I'm not for any of it, all right? So let me just clear again, because someone comes in right at this part. You know, I'm not for it at all. But, you know, if whittling down, creating a framework where, you know, that a legal framework where this is not acceptable, you will be penalized, you will be fined. You, matter of fact, we may pull a license, you know, for whatever, whatever language needs to come into that legal approach that needs to happen and it might put it's going to put in people's minds that you know if you upload something you're accountable i mean an example of this for in, in i would think in probably all the states because i've heard so many stories you know if frank let's just use frank were to download child pornography every image is a charge so there, I mean, I know that's how, it, if I understand the state of Louisiana, that's what that is. So, I mean, so the person has downloaded a hundred images. There are a hundred separate charges that, because these are individuals, you know, and, and it may be based on an individual. Again, I don't know all the legal, but that for someone who is pondering, thinking in this, in this way, it really will cause them to, to pause. You know, if I get caught, I'm going to spend quite a few years in jail. You know, I'm, this is not just going to go away as a misdemeanor. You know, here there's something here. There's a felony attached. This is this is child pornography. Well, that's what we're talking about here. There's a 13 year old girl. This is child pornography, and so that is what I mean by the the legal framework that that has the potential to come out of this, and and also I, within the legal frame would be to show how others who participated in this. So you know, back to Visa, back to MasterCard, you're talking about PayPal, I mean, how they, they said, oh, I'm not, I'm not getting into all this, you know, but it doesn't mean that others are not involved, you know, that are, need to pause. Well, and also those companies can't hide behind, like, I think Visa was trying to say, oh, we're a third party, we can't right. like go over all of our transactions, which is fair to a point, like Visa can't be monitoring, like it might be hard for Visa to monitor what each individual does, but if they're using, letting their equipment basically their right. program to be used by something this blatantly obvious and they're so involved that when they stop processing it 80 percent of those videos go away that's clearly a closer connection than some random person with a visa card who does one transaction in right. some unknown area like exactly. it's a very different you can't really hide behind that third exactly. party approach when it's so clearly there's a cause and effect there. Exactly. And I think with, with it all too, is that, you know, I'm thinking here of a moral agenda. So, you know, you can just use HLI, you know, as a Catholic uh, apostolate. So we have a very clear understanding of what the moral agenda is for HLI. And that is the advancement of life to, to advance the, the beauty of life from its natural beginning and conception to its natural end. And so everything that we do is centered on that reality, advancing that moral agenda. And so same thing in these companies, even secular institutes have an agenda. They have a mission, they have a strategy, they have uh, core values. And what you just brought up as an example, as an institution, leaders need to say, we're not participating on any level of this, you know, and even if it is, you know, a remote cooperation, that's too close as well. So that yeah. takes people to lead to say that this is this is this is vile. I don't want to be a part of it at all. But when there's so much money involved, it's such a temptation. But as you just said, that one pullback pull, radically altered that conversation in in, a, in literally in the blink of an eye, and so pull back even further and say, we don't want nothing to do with it at all. That would have sent a far deeper message. Yeah. 
And that's what we're talking about here. And But we need to resensitize people because, again, part of what this reveals, Colleen, is the whole elements of the sexual revolution, too. The whole rejection, you know, of uh, of human persons, an understanding of the of respect owed to human persons, a, a, a whole new uh, approach to the issue of sex, you know, has radically changed how people approach this. And so this is what the industry feeds on and supports, sustains, incentivizes in every way. So this is what we're up against. So again, this podcast and talking about it, I mean, you and I would be considered so far on the uh, on, on the on the edge uh, because people don't 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 hear this. They think that we're just being pr- uh, prudish, and we are just you know, in a sense of just you know, oh, yeah, you're just being too sensitive. You need to catch up with where things are today. You're you're making decisions based on things that we used to believe many years ago and by and whatever the, the the wording is used. It, it, so it, that in itself is false, you know. And so what was was true about the human person a hundred years ago, a thousand years ago, two thousand, it's the same today. And and so what's happened is we have been desensitized. We have allowed ourselves to be desensitized. I mean, I'm on airplanes quite often. You know, I'm always amazed at the vulgarity in language, also the immodesty. And we, but again, people have been so desensitized, they don't think anything of it, of using a vulgarity, speaking something that uh, before people would have turned around and said, excuse me, that's inappropriate. Today, if you do that, you're the problem. All right, and so we've lost a sense of that 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 sensitivity to good and to what is what is uh, uh, and, and respect owed to other people and 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 what is morally good and what is wrong and what is bad, what is evil, and so this is speaks this is a, a, a in a sense a, a a consequence of something much more systemic that that this is revealing, and that's why I also like to address the subject because it helps us talk about the other issues and makes people hopefully pause and ask questions, you know. And, and so uh, is this little article that I wrote going to all of a sudden change the, the pornography industry and they're going to, oh, you know, Father wrote on this. But it could, and I hope it does, make the reader and, to, and through the podcast, the listener, you know, pause. And there are sadly many people who struggle, you know, with pornography on different levels. And uh, so... If we, as a people, say this is repugnant, it's repulsive. So yes, the child part of it, absolute. But the whole thing, mm-hmm. we should treat the same way. This is not good for us. Well, and hopefully it's one of those stories that is so incredibly repugnant that even if those people that might not quite be like sensitive enough to be able, like they might look at porn and say, oh, okay, it's okay if it's they're both consenting to it hopefully this is something that will shock them into realizing how dark some aspects of the industry are and maybe they'll start questioning everything like start questioning things that they accepted as okay before and realize that oh actually yeah it's not okay for a child and it's never but it's also shouldn't be okay for an adult even if it is consensual it's always going to be even if they agree to it in a form of abuse, I think it's either important for, them. for people to. In this article, I don't obviously get into that. I'm just dealing with some of the the parameters of it. But there are so many studies, you know, so many studies out there that show the the, the negative consequences of this industry mm-hmm. on people, you yeah. know, on how they think, how they respond, you know, and how people within relationships attempt to act out these behaviors. And because it's it's it's, it's an illusionary world. Yes, it's involving real people, but it's illusion. There's so much here that's that's theater and so many other complexities of that. And and the bishops themselves talk about that in, in a number of their documents and the way they approach the subject and talking about this this industry. And I think it's important for people who are who are working, especially with young people, you know, especially before they get into their teenage years. You know, we want to obviously maintain innocence and not introduce them to things. At the same time, you know, we, we should uh, very prudently and very, very, very slowly keep them aware that these things are out there. And we have to have, you know, discipline and we have to, you know, un- understand, you know, there's a proper order and a proper response. And there's, you know, how we uh, deal with the situations around us. You know, what do all these things mean? Modesty, purity, you know, chastity, all these this language that, you know, we need to reintroduce. Uh, and But, you know, the sad thing is how many of our young people, you know, on these games they're playing, they're in, being introduced to immodesty, 
it's there. You know, the way the, these cartoon characters are sometimes these made to re- look like real characters and how they dress, how they act, what they say, um, you know, some of the uh, sad things they're being introduced to, too, with, uh, you know, sexual misgivings and misbehaviors, and it's all there. And so parents need to really pay attention because this is setting the stage, mm-hmm. is preparing them for something more, something much more, more graphic. And as it moves forward in time, it just becomes so desensitized that it's just part of the day. You know, and if you're learning it when you're four or five years old in school about like right. all of these things like that can come up or on cartoons, like you're so young, you can't look at it and say, oh, that doesn't seem right because you're right. still learning what's right. right. You don't know what's right and wrong. And so if right. some adult tells you that, it seems like it's normal. That's right. And, 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 and that's kind of why they, they're getting, you know, they're, they're lowering the bar as, as much as they can. In other words, they, it's, it's almost like taking a risk, see how far we can go, how far. But. But the soft porn, which is what we talked about a little earlier, the different ways that you see those on TV commercials. That's an example. Billboards, magazines, uh, you know, uh, ads, you know, on, on various, uh, you know, platforms. These are all s- in soft ways, you know, to, to kind of intrude, push the agenda. And then they just kind of, then it moves into other layers. I mean, it, it's not unheard of for people, anyone about, say, 60 years of old, old would know, you know, what some of these things were just 30 years ago, 40 years ago, 20 years ago. We've pushed so far, you know, this this bar to allow more and more. So it's, in other words, it's never satiated. It's, it's never enough. You know, it's, it's a constant, you know, how far can we go? What other perversion can we do? You know, how can we stretch it even more? And, you know, and this is what this whole industry is feeding on. It's marketing and it's incentivizing the situation and it's, it's bringing other people into that arena. We know the whole idea. I just gave an example of some of the uh, headline news of human trafficking. You know, it's out there. And, you know, and, and we have to realize that within our own country here in the United States, there are ports of entry, you know, that where human trafficking is a hub. And, and, and a lot of this, again, is labor related. So, but a good portion of it is also for sex trafficking. Well, and then you run into abortion as well, because then once like people who have been trafficked, if they get pregnant, then you run into abortion and then it feeds the abortion industry and they make money off of it. And, and it's just, industry. exactly. Right. And it just keeps, it's all like one terrible tide that's all. Like right. it's all tied together and right. it you it's hard to attack one without then involving everything exactly. else. Paul and, Marx used to call it the great sex mess. Yeah. It's just a big mess. Which is nice, but it means you have to like push back on like this level and push back on like Correct. push back on the pornography and push back on the contraceptive Correct. and push back on the abortion to make any headway in any one of those fields. Right. It's and that's so why what tied you said earlier is the younger you start, the longer you have that individual. Yeah. And this is this 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 is this is really evil. When you think think about this, I mean, they're really aiming at children, mm-hmm. aiming the exploitation, and then getting to a point at this stage where you have a young young girl, a young teenager, you know, that gets herself into this moment of time, you know, with her boyfriend, who then takes advantage of that moment and uh, and and uploads, you know, or downloads, whatever the language is, uh, to uh, to put that video out there, and life is now changed. Yeah, and, she had uh, no clue what she was. She was thirteen. No, like, there's exactly. no way that you can ever imagine those repercussions, even no, if you're not thinking through them no. at all. And uh, and and so, but but it, it, the reality is, this is happening daily. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't hear the stories. We don't hear of someone like this young lady, but they're out there. And uh, and again, because of the way the industry is going, this is also now involving young men, young guys. And uh, and so this is so it's just there's no. We have to say enough enough it's it's it, it, you know and we need to as i said earlier it's not a matter of we want the whole thing gone you know we want the whole industry to be shut down uh, but if we don't start whittling down creating very tight legal approaches to this protecting especially our young our vulnerable uh, our our uh, our children our young adolescents from this industry and being exploited by this industry. If we don't start holding people accountable who are downloading these these uh, and, and uploading them and sharing them, in other words, they they, they track so many things. Mm-hmm. There's no doubt they can track. You know who's been uploading these and down don't downloading them and and hold them accountable. This is child pornography. We have we this we have federal laws on this. Hold them accountable and hold the one that puts the platform. I think it goes back to MindGeek. Goes back to Pornhub. They should be held accountable for this. Mm-hmm. They're not innocent. This is something they allowed on their platform, 
And, and so they are accountable for this, among many others that are in this lawsuit. But that's just a small contingency, you know, of how many are out there. And then this should be like, in some ways, legally an easier battle to win just because those laws already do exist. Like you said, it's not like you're trying to create new laws that could to, to protect against this. Those laws are there. You just, they need to be enforced exactly. and people need to be held accountable. And exactly. And yeah. I'll, and Colleen, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that you tied those, all the other issues together because it, it's something that gets lost and, it, and it's so true is seeing them all as kind of a single movement, you know, because they're all tied. You know, and so, and, and you hear, if you read, you know, stories of, of women, men who have come out of this industry, hear their stories, hear the horrific things that happened to them. And, and you're right. I mean, the whole idea of being sterilized or, uh, you know, or obviously taking much oral contraceptions or injectables and, you know, you, the, the, and then when those failed, you know, hum, abortion and how many of them have suffered multiple abortions. And now at a stage where they, when they came out of the industry, no longer usable because they no longer looked a certain way, then, but many of them not able to have children you know, to marry. You know, it, it, this, again, like you said, don't think about that in the beginning, even for someone who freely, quote, chose to get into this as an adult, not thinking all the way through, not thinking of what is going to demand of me. What, what kind of life am I going to live? And, and of course, people see the glam. You know, they see the money. They see the, you know, the, the headlines and the awards. There's a whole award industry in this, in this thing. I mean, it's just out there. And, and, and so this is what's being, being sustained. And so uh, this case, in a way, kind of takes one of those kind of blocks. I don't know the name of that, that game when you pull. Jenga. Uh, yes. Jenga. So in a way, it's kind of it's pulled one out of it. Yeah. And it's made it unstable. What was the final decision? I think you said in your article that Visa is, they've stopped processing payments, I think is what you... That's what I understand from what I've read. Okay. And so, yeah. and of course, things could change on a daily basis. But when I when I originally wrote the column, looked at the column, that was my understanding. Okay. And so, but I would encourage people just stay, if you're interested in all the detail, you know, click on the links, they'll bring you to, uh, to more updates that are out there. Because sometimes when I'm looking at this, I'm two weeks, you know, <laughs> earlier looking at a story, you know, kind of thinking, okay... Could I use this for, you know, to, to speak about and then kind of move forward? And sometimes, you know, I have to go back and uh, right before I go to release it, okay, let me update. This is the new link that just came out and, and that happens. And yeah. so things could have occurred since I even put this out. Okay. But as of that was your understanding, right. that's what I thought. I just wanted to make sure I understood right. your article properly. Yeah. And like, do you think that that's an effective strategy right now for whittling down the porn industry as of as, like doing what Serena's doing where she's going after the funding behind it, the processing of payments? Because to me, at least, that seems like a very effective way to put the pressure where, like, the money is, basically. Right. I mean, it's a, great, it's a great strategy. I mean, yeah. it's a great tactic. And it, it, will, it does, as we've already seen, it does have an impact. And so uh, I, I'm, I'm glad that, that this is being done in that way. But, you know, it's not the only way. Yeah. And as we've been talking about, I mean, it is, <clears throat> you know, we have to find the creative ways to expose it, to call to mind those who are accountable you know, for these, uh, obviously, you know, there are people behind these names. So Pornhub is a name. MindGeek is the name of the company, you know, but there are people behind that, you know, and so they, th these are the people that should be held accountable and, uh, and for what they've done and failed to do. But I would also say, Colleen, is that can we approach it in other ways? So, you know, uh, I would say that a good probability just 20, 30 years ago that this conversation would have been tied into many sermons and homilies and reflections and, and, and people really promoting virtue. This would have been talked about. And I wonder today, is this talked about, you know, uh, this, this, this industry? That's been created. And the pressure on the entertainment industry has worked before. If you look back at the history of the code that directed the movies, um, what could go into movies between the mid 30s and I believe the 50s. Right. Um, right. One of my roommates has done a lot of research on it. But she was saying that if you look at the movies from the early 30s and the 20s, there's some pretty there's innuendo in there. There's stuff that you don't see. People think, oh, old movies are so clean. And they weren't when right. movies first started being made. It was when people started giving pushback and they said, we don't want to see this in movies. And they came up with the code that then for the next 20 years right. directed what you could put in those movies and what you couldn't right. and what could be shown. And so 
the pushback on these on the entertainment industries worked before, and it's obviously more right. challenging in a time well, of social about, media. You know, but Laura and uh, uh, and 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 uh, I just lost the name on the on the Dick, uh, Laura and Dick Van Dyke show. Yeah, separate beds. Yes, Lucy and and, and, Lucy and, and Desi. Desi. Okay, so any married couple and it would tell you we didn't sleep in separate beds. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so, but the idea, but but again, that's what you're talking about. There was a sensitivity. There was a censorship in a sense that there was a recognition that there's certain things on TV that we don't want to show. People of rational ability would know that there, there, there's, there's one bed, you know, and that kind of stuff. That's just an example. There's many others like it, but you're absolutely right. I mean, and even though they were already pushing the buttons, they were already pushing, but because people had more of a, of a moral compass. There was more of a religious center. Our Judeo-Christian values were very, very much rich to us, very important to us, and, and it was expressed by people. You know, when you had people that would get up and, and, uh, and, and push back, as you say, but, but those are, are, are not as readily there, and, and our voices are drowned out, you know, sometimes just completely silenced, you know, pulled from the, the plug is pulled on us. And so we, we have a hard time, you know, advancing those platforms. And, and that's why we got to talk to our, what you asked, what could we do? So this is one way, you know, by what uh, uh, Flantes is doing is going at this in a very, very good way. But, you know, what about contacting our legislators? What about contacting, you know, lobbyists working in this cause? We need to be talking about this. This needs to be an agenda on the concern of, of others. And we need to do the stats. We can show how this is affecting marriage, which again, we've, again, we've lost a sense. We have a very divorce-minded culture today. So, it's, uh, so, it, it, so we need to recognize this. These things are undermining the very pillars, you know, and this is an example. This is but one, it's a major one, but it's a, it's a major, it's an example of how we keep assaulting the family, marriage. That, so we gotta get underneath and realize what, what's being done here and the mockery of, of, of these sacred institutions, you know, this natural institution of marriage and family. is, it, and So that's why it's important for us to have these kinds of conversations. And, and as we have talked about whether we're dealing with the contraceptive mentality and ideology, whether we're dealing with the abortion you know, mentality and ideology, and the whole euthanasia movement and its mentality, this is another example of that. Mm-hmm. And we just need to, 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 to the strategies we're using and all the other uh, things I just mentioned, we got to approach this the same way by getting more and more people involved. But we need our leaders. We need our 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 our, our civil leaders who see this is something not good for us. And if they don't, we need to try to reach out to them to show them that what the statistics are showing us, what the studies are showing. Us. And but those get buried, you know, because there's a lot of money here. A lot of money in the abortion industry and, you know, a lot of money out there. And, you know, and what St. Paul said, the love of money, you know, right. is the root. And, and it is. It, it, it blinds people. It, it, it tempts people. But there's something harmful, very harmful here. And it's, and it's, at a, and it's it, there's no human flourishing in this. There's no good of the human person that's going to be advanced in this. It, it's undermining the dignity of the person, and it's undermining our core values, and it's undermining our society as a moral society. We should be not only about this 13-year-old at the time, Mm -hmm. should we be appalled, all right? We should be appalled that that there even was an opportunity for that to happen. And appalled that adults, like, quote, consenting adults were also able to be involved in things like this, too. You saw the numbers in the article, how many people hit on that one? Yeah. Video. I think it was 2.7 million was just one because it kept getting like they would be taken down and re-uploaded on a separate site. And so one of those many ones that got uploaded was at least I think it was 2.7 million. And the other thing that um, I was doing some research and it seemed that the ad, the amount of money they get from the ads is generated by how many views are on these videos. And that was part of their um, not wanting to take it down was because... It, they were, it was generating so many exactly. views that it was very valuable ad space to them. Very much as we see in other marketing industries. Mm-hmm. They use exactly. ads, why they're out there, you know, and, and why, they're, why they are there so frequently. You just gave the rationale behind it. And so it applies here. It's marketing value. It's, it's how they're, they're, they're marketing their product. But I just think on that much. It's a product. It's this, a is a, this is a person. It's a person. This is not a pair of shoes. All right. It's not perfume. All right. You know, it's not fishing gear. 
It's a human person. So that's what I'm hoping, you know, by us doing this today, Colleen, is just doing that, is, is keeping that our language, person, human being, person of dignity, person that is owed respect. And um, my argument still remains, even of a person freely, of their own free will, not a, not a, not a, not a child, not an adolescent, an adult, still I would say the same thing. There's there's nothing good here. It undermines that dignity, and 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 it exploits this person and and treats them as as a thing to be used, even with their own permission. It doesn't make it right, right? And you can rename it, redefine it, justify it. Does not change it. And so this is what we just got to keep talking about. And and uh, and and to be honest, I think we just need to. We don't hear this from our our pulpits enough, we don't hear it from our spiritual leaders enough, and we don't confront it enough. I mean, how many people, and I, uh, we can obviously you know, go on and talk more and more, but how many people sitting in our pews, in our churches, in our faith communities are involved in this? And, and so this is really something we need not be afraid to address and to help with great love and sensitivity to address the issue. And, and not be afraid of it. Uh, we don't have to uh, use it as a, as a billy club, but to, to not be afraid of, 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 of broaching the subject and helping people to see that this is not good. Well, and those people are also victims of the industry. Like, it's not, yeah, it's not good to be viewing it, but also they're being used by the industry for right. their views. So it, it's everyone's a victim, basically, right. in that situation. Right. right. And so it's, it, again, because we're being marketed. Yeah. So let's pause. And let's just say, okay, time out. This example of this young woman, now an adult, but at the time a 13-year-old girl, this is happening daily. That needs to come to an end. Time out. How can this be good for our culture? Not just the 13-year-old, but all of it. How is this good for our culture? What do we... What does this say of us? I mean, I think of Mother Teresa when, of course, talking about abortion, but she would, she, and she did, she made lots of comments about this subject as well. Where, how is this good? What, does, what kind of human flourishing does this promote? How does this help our, our family life? How does it support our, our fidelity within marriage? How does it support marriage? How does it support us as a moral uh, society? Those are questions, and there are many studies that answer this. And so this is what we need to bring to the surface. So I know that you and I will talk about this more as we go forward in time. You know, and I said, uh, we've done this before. And I've, I mean, in these 12 years, I've written on this subject many, many times. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a subject that I, I, I periodically come back to, you know, and pick up, you know, often uh, because it fits into the total picture that you so beautifully a while ago articulated. Uh, and that's good for people all of us, myself included, not to get fixated on one thing, but to see how does it fit in the total picture. Because why? We begin with the human person, and quote, we end with the human person. So how does it help human flourishing? How does it undermine human flourishing? And if it undermines human flourishing, then it is not good. And it's not something we should be promoting or advancing. Well, thank you, Father. Is there anything else you'd like to say before we finish up for today? My last part would be is just let's you know let's pray. Let's really pray for uh, for those that have been victimized in this industry, for those who have suffered so greatly through because of this industry. Let's remember in prayer many people who are struggling with addiction to pornography. There, you know, are mil- many, many, and uh, and let's also pray you know for our our civil leaders and our church leaders not to be afraid to to confront this very evil uh, industry. And let us finally pray, you know, that we as a society can heal, you know, from, from all these moral wounds that we're suffering from, uh, that the, the choices we have made, the things that we've endorsed. And, and my final prayer is for a greater sensitivity. You know, and I and I would say this, and I use it. I know our audience, you can't see this because my where my hands are, but I'm gonna put my hands a little further up so you can. That if Colleen had a ten pound sledgehammer, and she hit my hand, I guarantee you, I'm gonna feel it. All right, but the more that my nerves become damaged, the more that I no longer have sensitivity in the hand, the less I will feel, and and so that's in a way where we are. 
we no longer feel, we no longer are sensitive. So my prayer is that we become resensitized. But the only way, Colleen, that's going to happen is by people like you and me and other good people out there who really care, who are really concerned about the well-being of our country, the well-being of people, that we have the courage to get out there and not be afraid of being ridiculed, not be afraid of being outshouted or outshouted down, or, or be afraid of being you know, uh, outwardly labeled, but because it's the right thing. And we have to each find our way to do this. We have to find our path in. And I think that this legal battle is one path in, but we need many other ways of, of chipping away at this mighty mountain that has been created. And, and, uh, and, and we can do it. Again, this is an obtainable end we can obtain. We can get there if we are united. Well, thank you, Father, so much for today. Um, and just to everyone listening, if you're watching on YouTube or on Rumble, please remember to like and subscribe. And if you're listening on one of our audio channels, please follow and share with any friends that um, you think would find our topics interesting. And yeah, just keep on living the culture of life. God bless. Mm-hmm.